there are some things in here that are um, objectionable. The one is the inability of married couples to um, file at the federal level jointly and being forced then to file jointly at the state level. So let's take an, let's take a, uh, an example of a married couple, one of whom is a school administrator and the other one is a fireman. Easily, easily their income could exceed $250,000 and under this rate structure, their uh, income would be taxed at 7.75 or 7.75 percent instead of the 4.95 percent if they were allowed to file separately, each take claiming his or her own income and paying taxes on that. So. Uh, not only are you bound in matrimony uh, till death do you part, the state is binding you in a tax matrimony until death do you part, not for your benefit, but for the benefit of the state. Um, I also uh, am looking at the uh, number of people who are going to be subject to these uh, various rates based on our estimation. And I think I talked about this when the, when the constitutional amendment was, um, was uh, um, uh, spoken about, but I see a, uh, in the bracket of a million dollars plus, the ones who are gonna be subject to all of the, they're, all their income is gonna be subject to the highest rate. There are 24,500 people in the state of Illinois who make that kind of money, out of which it is inspected there is going to be 2.6 billion, with a B, dollars of tax revenue, Tom, um, it, which would then be uh, 2.5. Excuse me, Representative Reich. Representative Bourne, you've indicated you'd like to yield your time to Representative Reich. More minutes, Representative Reich. Thank you, Representative. Um, 24,500 people who are subject to the maximum tax rate responsible for 2.5 billion with a B dollars of tax revenue in a year. COGFA has told us with quite certain, with, with reasonable certainty, and I have a reason to trust them, is that within the next couple of years we're going to suffer an economic downturn. In 2008 when we had an economic downturn, we had the crash. In the year following that crash, Illinois, which was then taxing income at 3% instead of the 7.95% we're talking about now, Illinois lost personal and corporate income taxes of 1.6 billion with a B dollars. Now here's the problem, folks. If we have another economic downturn, the people who are, whose incomes are going to be most affected by this are those who are making the most money and paying the most tax. So when their income goes down, the drop in tax revenue is going to be precipitous. And I would ask this, uh, the, the sponsor of this bill, has any, has any provision been made to uh, provide for what happens when that happens? Um, are these rates going to be um, are these rates going to be enshrined for five years? Is there a sunset? Is there a time limit that you know they won't be changed? I don't think that that is. Uh, I don't. Th I didn't see anything like that in this bill. So what we're looking at is a pig and a poke, or as my good friend from Plainfield said, teaser rates. The fact is, is that we've had people on this floor already saying that we're not raising the rates enough. The rates aren't high enough. We need more. How long is it going to be before the next downturn comes and the first thing they do is run to their microphones and, and say, we need more revenue and therefore we either need to broaden the brackets or raise the rates? Folks, this is not a good idea. The progressive income tax is really, if you look at it, not much different than what the speaker gave us in 2014 as his millionaire's tax. It was a lousy idea then. This is a lousy idea now. The people of Illinois, I think, are going to realize that what a lousy idea this is, and hopefully uh, smarter minds than ours will prevail, and this, and this constitutional amendment will go down in flames, and these rates will go down with them. But the fact remains is that if the constitutional amendment passes, there is no way in God's heaven that this, these, this rate structure is going to survive 
the first winds of an economic downturn? No, vote no. Thank you. Representative Walker.